Hey guys, this is Tony Grillo. Welcome to this series of tutorials on working with bitmap assets in Toon Boom Harmony. Now Harmony is basically a vector-based application, but it does an amazing job with bitmap assets with alpha channels. Working with bitmaps can be very tricky, especially when you're importing a layered Photoshop file, and I'm going to show you how to adapt that into your workflow as smoothly as possible. For our bitmap source, we'll be using the book Little Taco Truck by Tanya Valentine and Jorge Martin, and you'll be joining me as I produce the Little Taco Truck book trailer. Now this tutorial assumes you have a basic working knowledge of Toon Boom Harmony, so I'm not going to get into the details of everything, but I'll show you a few tricks and techniques. This is part one, which is prepping assets in Photoshop and importing them into Toon Boom. A little taco truck trailer is going to be adapted from art directly from the book. So first step is getting your hands on the actual book art that the artist has created. And it's beautiful. It's all separated. Uh, the artist used Photoshop to build the files and, and uh, layer them. But you don't want to just start grabbing art from there. You actually want to prep your characters so that you can animate them. Today we're going to prep Gumbo Jumbo, one of Little Taco Truck's friends from the book. One of the biggest mistakes I see artists make in preparation is they don't scale their characters uh, before developing their assets. So this is an actual like a lineup that I set up uh, which is what you'd see in, in, uh, in traditional animation anywhere. Characters are placed side by side on the screen using the main character as the benchmark. You get them all together in one file and make sure that they are scaled the way they are designed to be scaled in the book. So you have every character in the book here, including the animals, and they are all scaled to little taco truck scale. Gumbo Jumbo, we're going to put him into a new file. So the first thing we'll do is duplicate the group, set it up in a new file, then you have to crop that file. Because now that you know the scale is correct, you don't have to work with that giant layout background. You can just give him his own bounding box. And we're going to start separating items. We know we're going to have changes in his face. We know we're going to have steaming bowls, rolling tires, things like that. So when he's rolling in and out, maybe the lobster moving around, having a little bit of life in his eyes there. These are all tiny little things, but they, I think they will add to the overall experience. We're going to do a lot of merging layers and then a lot of re-separating things. I took the jumbo gumbo that was all in one overlay and I took that and separated it into its own text layer. When you flip the truck around and have him look the other way, jumbo gumbo is going to flip around too. So you want to double flip it so that when he's facing that way, Jumbo Gumbo is still readable from left to right. Again, I love the idea of having that lobster move around like this. So I was thinking it'd be nice to have the pupils on one layer, the circles on another, and the brows on another. And that way I can do a couple of little cute blinks or something for him. Now the whole lobster is in his own folder. So right now I want to find some faces for Gumbo Jumbo. I'm going through every file where Gumbo Jumbo actually has a different face than, the, than that neutral one, and we're going to open it. So we're basically stealing faces from these guys. Um, first thing I want to do is just kind of move them into place, into positioning. And we're going to separate the pupils out. And the way it looks right now, they can both work in unison. Normally I'd split my pupils to two separate layers, but these guys are just kind of a uniformity there. We have all the assets we need to create three or four expressions. Now that you have everything separated into layers, now you have to sort of prepare it for Toon Boom. And uh, Toon Boom does not handle Photoshop import the same way that, say, After Effects or Flash would. Put each layer into its own folder. So each new folder is going to be a layer. So we can take both mouths and put them into the mouths folder. And that means you'll get a mouth on frame one and a mouth on frame two, but they'll both be on the same layer when you get into Toon Boom. So there's some compromise that you can engineer past the, the buck forward a little bit and let this work happen in Toon Boom. But I find that it's actually easier to manipulate these layers and get them all set up in Photoshop before you send it out than it is to do it in Toon Boom, which for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna separate the lobster's layers in Toon Boom and rig them in there and show you the kind of complications that we're dealing with. I'm going to save this version and we'll get rolling.
This is Scene Master, where I will be importing Jumbo Gumbo. This is already becoming a loaded scene, so we're going to turn off everything that we're not using right now, and that will give us a chance to just import what we need for, for this particular lesson. So I'm importing images, Gumbo Jumbo version 3. Typically, when importing a Photoshop file, we're going to choose Create Layer and the sub-selection of Create Single Layer Named, and it'll name it Jumbo VO3. You want to import as a Toon Boom bitmap drawing, and then alignment rules, actual size, transparency, pre-multiplied with white, and when you hit OK, because it's a Photoshop layered file, you want to give it this little extra instructions of create groups as layers. Now, there are times when you would choose individual layers, but today, because of the way we set it up, we're going to choose groups as layers and the transparency uh, straight. Click OK. And there he is. Now, already I'm seeing some wacky stuff happening here. It looks a little weird, right? We'll work all that out. The first thing I want to do is group all of this, group the selection with a composite. And that way, when you see it here in our nodes, that group represents gumbo jumbo. So I just made a peg. So that's our group, and that's the peg that the group is on. So we can scale him after we're done with this part. Close everything up and give Gumbo Jumbo a full timeline existence here, F5. He still looks kind of weird, right? He's missing some things, and that's because of the way we set it up. We left some room for a little bit of rigging that is specific to Tumbo. One thing you'll notice when you click on any one of these layers, if you look up here in the library window, every single layer has on it every single drawing from the Photoshop file. Not to worry, if you don't want to deal with all these extra frames being in there, you can actually add another drawing layer and just take the two drawings that you want and put them up there. And you see that did exactly what we wanted. We have just the eyes, and nothing else. So this is something you'd have to do for every single layer and then of course make sure to fill in the character. Now the wheels from the Photoshop file, we just put both wheels in one folder which means it treated that as if it were a separate drawing frame. Let's go ahead and put them on their own layers. I'm actually going to add two drawings so I can do the same trick we just did, moving each one of these to a new layer, thus giving it only one drawing frame for each wheel, instead of having every other frame from the Photoshop file showing up as a drawing frame. Now let's look at the lobster. We put all of the lobster into one folder, which means when it was imported, it all came into individual frames. So we're going to actually need to move each one of these to its own drawing layer and then rig that for animation as its own character. And again, once we've done this, if you look up here at the library, each one is going to have a single drawing inside of its substitutions. I'm going to give it a peg and then we'll drop everything else inside of that. So now you have the lobster on his own or her own peg and we can rename everything. And now you're pretty much ready to start uh, rigging and animating. Be sure to check out the next tutorial in this series, which is rigging bitmap assets in Toon Boom. And uh, stick around for the part where I realize that I've been calling the crawfish a lobster. We'll even get into Photoshop prep a little more deeply in the tutorial on building a walk cycle using deformers. To learn more about the book, Little Taco Truck by Tanya Valentine, search for it at the publisher's page, Penguin Random House, or purchase Little Taco Truck at any bookseller. Check out the YouTube channel to watch the completed Little Taco Truck book trailer or visit Mighty Pants to check out more of my videos. Thanks for watching and happy animating everybody.